it out. We got a fish on the diver, folks, in heavy winds, so it's gonna be a challenge. I'm gonna control the kayak. Gina's gonna fight the fish, and we might land it. We're tethered together, and when we get in chop like this, it pressurizes that water between us and uh, giving us quite the bath. Oh yeah, we got a nice little rainbow on there. Gina's not a big one to touch the fish. She's gonna swing that fish right over to me. Theoretically. Oh, there he is. Yes. Whoa, I got a worm in my eye. On the Dipsy Diver. Wow, he feisty. There we go. There go, slow death hook. Get that little guy right there. Get him back. Howdy, folks. Cal Kellogg here. Um, I'm doing great. I hope you're doing well, too. Um, this is a follow-up video to the diver video I posted a few months ago. Today, I want to talk about some of the pros and cons of trolling with divers if you're targeting trout, kokanee, or landlocked kings. And I got to say, divers, I, I've been playing with them for more than a month. Um, this season, been catching a lot of fish on them, been using them to target fish that are holding anywhere from about 30 to 40 feet deep right now. Um, as I start fishing some other lakes, I'm going to use the divers to fish even deeper. So let's look at some of the pros and cons of, of divers. Now, here's the actual rig you saw my wife hook up on um, in the beginning of this video up at French Meadows this week. You're using this diver right here, this Dipsy diver. And uh, let me show you what we're doing what we're using in place of a downrigger is simply this uh, this diver. Main line comes into it here. This is the release. Um, I got about, oh, I don't know, 24 inches of 20 pound fluoro coming down to a snap, coming down to a willow leaf pro, coming down on 10 pound fluoro, slow death hook about, I don't know, 30 inches behind the, behind the blade, tip up please, behind the blade and uh, and that's about it. So when, when a fish comes along, grabs your worm back here, the diver's in this position, it's, it's dove down, he, he pulls on it and he just pops that release and now the diver will come to the surface, fish on, fish in the box, no fussing with the downrigger. I can get down to about 90 feet with this device. So it's a, it's a very useful piece of equipment for trout and landlocked salmon anglers especially the small boat guys, guys like me don't want to fuss with the downrigger. I've got a nice downrigger, but I, I gotta be honest with you, it's a pain. I mean, it retrieves like six inches of line at a time when I'm all like this, much more convenient, much more efficient, much cheaper. This is $20, works all day long and it's in the cool UV color. So anyway, we're gonna get this diver back in the water in a little bit. We're actually gonna take Lucy swimming here, but uh, directly. So, pros and cons, pros. The list is long. The pro list is long. The con list is short. Let's start out with the cons. The only con I see fishing with divers is that it requires, you can see my rod here, it requires tackle that is a size or two larger than you would use for traditional downrigger fishing, you know, for trout or landlocked salmon. What I'm using to fish my divers is the, um, is, is one of my signature salmon halibut striper rods. It's rated for eight to 20 pound test. Absolutely perfect for diver fishing. You also need a long rod for diver fishing because you're running your entire leader behind the diver. So if this is six or eight feet long, you need to, to have a rod to accommodate that. So. The one con is you have to use heavier tackle than you ordinarily would use if you're gonna fish with divers. On the pro side, one, super, super simple to use, way simpler, way more convenient to use than a downrigger. That's one. Number two, cost. This diver right here, this is a $20 diver. Um, way more. <laughs> Um, cost effective than a downrigger. This can also do some things that a downrigger can. And I probably should have showed you this earlier. You'll see, you'll notice there's a screw, there's a screw right here. That adjusts the release tension. I could use this diver one day at a lake for trout, 
The next day, I could take it out and troll for kings outside the Golden Gate, and I, 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 I could do that, you know, I could use this for both species because I can adjust the release tension right there. Now, if you look at the bottom of this, you'll see this screw here, there's a bunch of numbers here. What that indicates, and all this information is in the package when you get a diver, um, this can be used like a side planer. If you adjust that lower screw, it'll plane out to the left or it'll plane out to the right. That allows you to get the diver out from underneath the boat and also out away from the rest of your gear. Um, these things dive, they, they have a very steep dive rate. For example, when I'm trolling 30 feet deep with this diver, I only have 45 feet of line out. If you want to troll down, you know, in excess of 80 feet, you're only going to have 170 feet of line out. So these things dive very steeply. Um, the final thing that I really, really like about the diver and something that has always annoyed me using downriggers is that, you know, and I've used all kinds of downrigger releases, invariably you'll get a fish hooked and you'll, you'll see the fish fighting on the tip of the rod. You have to pop it out of the clip and then, and then reel, and that's fine. I would say half of the fish I catch on downriggers don't pop the clip on their own, regardless of what kind of clip I'm using. And uh, I think I've used just about all of them. This, the diver, it, it is very crisp in terms of releasing. You, once in a while, you'll have a fish on there and he won't pop the clip. But most of the time, I would say 90 plus percent of the time, if you have that release screw ad adjusted appropriately, you are gonna get, get a very crisp release. You're gonna see the fish come in, hit, and you're gonna see that release pop. And uh, that's important. I think that actually will help you catch more fish throughout the course of the year because one of the reasons you lose fish when you're downrigger fishing particularly kokanee is the longer they fight against the clip the bigger that hole gets in their mouth because there's no real cushioning there they're they're fighting against a uh you know a, a hard you know a, a hard stop so to speak and it's just ripping that hole bigger in their mouth a lot of times they'll get off before the, the clip is popped or you'll pop the clip and then you'll lose those fish just because that hole's gotten so big. Don't get a lot of that with the diver. Of course, the con is you've got the diver in your line as you fight the fish, but I can tell you from experience that once this thing pops and, and the diver is, is, is in that configuration, it doesn't put up much resistance going through the water. So anyway, those are some of the pros and cons. And then there's other things you can do with diver divers definitely advanced fishing techniques but i was doing this you can kind of see the edge of this let me hold this up here you kind of see the edge of this is a little scarred up well the reason that's scarred up is i found a couple submerged you know basically rock pinnacles or rock islands at french meadows that they do have fish marks on them i haven't caught anything on them yet but what i'm able to do is i'll troll up to those and they they top out at about 25 feet right now you know at, at the lake level right now i'll walk that diver up to the edge of that rock pile the diver might be down 40 feet i'll feel it hit the first rock i'll reel in a little line hit again reel in a little more line bottom line is using a diver i can walk my bait right up on top of that rock pinnacle and right down the back side. You try doing that with a downrigger, you're gonna get tangled, you're gonna get snagged, you're gonna lose an expensive downrigger weight, and you're gonna lose a bunch of downrigger cable. With the diver though, every once in a while, it'll pop and rise up and I have to reset it and kind of start my troll again. But I am able to, to really manipulate the diver, walk it along the bottom, walk it over rock piles, stuff like that. Hasn't really paid off for me yet with a bunch of fish, but it's going to. It's a new technique, I'm playing with it. And uh, I can tell you, whenever you control, you know, in tight to structure, especially in tight to snaggy structure, you're ahead of the game. If you control where other guys are afraid to troll, oh man, you're gonna be showing your, your bait to fish that seldom see a bait, and the divers allow me to do that. And guess what? If I snag this up and I lose it, I'm out 20 bucks. Costs less than a downrigger weight. Last but not least, and I'm kind of rambling here, unlike downrigger weights, these things come in different colors. You can go with the metallic colors. 
You can go with colors like watermelon or hot orange. You can go with the glow color, stuff like that. So you also have some color alternatives, you know, to kind of experiment with and make no mistake, downrigger balls, divers, stuff like that, moving through the water, it absolutely positively attracts fish. They come in to look at the diver and they end up grabbing your bait. Anyway, I've rambled long enough. If you don't have a diver, you should seriously consider picking some up, particularly if you fish from a small craft like I do. You know me, I'm always out in a kayak. I have that downrigger. It retrieves about six inches of line per crank. So if I'm out somewhere where I need to fish 50 or 60 feet deep, guess what? That's a lot of cranking. I'm running with a, uh, with a diver. So anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. I just wanted to update you with, uh, you know, kind of my, my, uh, my successes, failures, my progress using divers. They are a very viable tool. They're old school, but guess what? So is lead core. And you guys see how many big fish I catch on lead core a year. Divers, man, if you need to get down deep, you don't want to fuss with a downrigger. You don't want to spend all that money on a downrigger. A $20 diver, it'll get you where you need to be, and you'll be yelling fish on. I'm Kel Kellogg. You have a great day. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you're looking for gear, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the support. Catch you later. Mm -hmm.